Okay, this is my third book and uh, I think we uh, usually have a lot of discussion internally about the name of the book or, but on this one I think it was the one we agonized the most over the name of the book because this book is about two, three, four different things. It's not as, um, it, it's not as clear cut about just one particular thing like the Zoya factor which was very clearly about the Zoya factor and Battle for Bitora which again had that kind of a name. This book sort of has two, a lot of strands going in it, so we agonized a lot over the name. But finally, this is the name we picked because it's about five sisters who live on this lane. You know, they live on Haley, on Haley Road in Delhi and this is kind of what the neighbors call them. So it's about the life of these five girls and on the road they call those Pricey Thakur girls. So that's why the name has come. Yeah, so the book is set in 1988. Uh, these are, you know, their five sisters, their father has named them alphabetically, so which is extremely cheesy and something they don't like very much. So they call Anjini, Binodini, Chandralekha, uh, Devjani and Ishwari. So uh, because the father is a judge and you know he has a very like methodical way of thinking and stuff. And uh, three of the girls are married. So the book is really about Devjani who is the fourth girl. And uh, it's about her life and the life of her younger sister who's still in school and Devjani is a little older. It's set in 1988. She's quite a star because she reads the news on, Durda, uh, on Desh Darpan. And, uh, uh, and because of that she's become very popular. Of course the whole thing is that Desh Darpan is um, very much the mouthpiece of the establishment. So the news she's reading is... The, you know, and it's the only news network in the in the country, and everyone has to watch that. So it's about uh, it's about freedom of the press. It's about censorship. Uh, the the main the person who sort of pushes her and challenges her on what she's doing with her life is this boy whose name is Dylan Singh Shekhawat, uh, which is you know the romantic angle, and he's a print journalist and he works for the India Post, and they have very different ways of reporting. So that's really the crux of the book. Somewhere I zoomed into family property disputes. So this book is also about a property dispute. Like so they live in this big house on Haley Road and uh, the house is um, sort of contested and there are a lot of people who have a share in the house. So there's a lot of that going in as well. But basically why I picked the 80s was uh, because I did want to write about journalism but I did feel that uh, there's a lot that's been written about it especially in 2012 and I have teenagers in the house and they don't seem to realize how privileged they are and how many things they have that we didn't have growing up so setting it in 1988 was also about you know pre-liberalization India and the fact that we didn't have Pepsi and Coke and we had Camper Cola and we had uh, Desh Darpan and things are very different but also it was that was also very charming and simple as well in a way it was a very different world, maybe a nicer world, maybe not a nicer world. Uh, the plot is, it's about Devjani and Dylan and uh, how against the background of all this stuff, which is the, you know, India in 88, the investigations into the anti-Sikh riots, which is not going very well, there's a lot of covering up happening. So that's sort of the background and the plot is really about their romance and uh, the, you know the way they come together and the way they fall apart and towards the ending they come together again and everyone learns a few lessons and everyone's world sort of opens up in different ways so that's really the thread you know so the romance is the thread and uh, the backdrop is all this other stuff I've told you about. This is a third person narrative which was new for me because as of now both Zoya and Bitora have been like a first person narrative I really enjoyed this. Initially it was it threw me a little because I'd never attempted it before. But uh, that also gave me a lot of freedom to just get inside anybody's head. So um, I really did enjoy that. Yes, Devjani is definitely a bit of an old fashioned girl. And uh, I, you know the pricey in the name is not so much about them being snooty, just them about being um, rather virtuous. <laughs> You know, it's about these girls who are, who take themselves, um, I mean, they have this, they're a little old fashioned, I think is maybe, you know, the nicest word I can think of to say, but it is, um, she's clearly a girl of that time, she's not ahead of her time or anything, she's like a girl who lives in that time and she's not very aware of what's happening around her, you know, so for her, 
if she pronounces all the English words correctly and she has a nice accent, she gets picked to read the news on TV, she's quite pleased with herself. She thinks that, you know, in a sense she's maxed it and she's got all these lovely sisters and she's not the prettiest of them. But she feels with this she's really come to a good place. So when you begin, she's a little smug about that. Whilst, of course, being quite insecure about the usual things girls are insecure about, you know, as in uh, the way she looks, the way she comes across, what her father calls the god. She's worshipping at the altar of the god of what people will think. And so she's a little like that. And uh, through the book, you see that she figures a lot of that stuff out and realizes that there is a wider world and life is not just living on Haley Road and not really knowing what's happening beyond her little triangle of work and home and you know so it's like that um not a friend but i have uh, i'm from a family of four sisters my mother is from a family of five sisters so i really enjoy i grew up in a boarding school full of girls so i do enjoy that uh, the girly world of sisters and um so it is a little bit on um, one of my sisters and one of my daughters and it's sort of a mix and mash of a few people I know to create this person. No, I don't think so. I think uh, in my books, I put in large dollops of reality everywhere, you know. So I'm a little, um, I have these rose tinted spectacles on when it comes to the romance of it, but when it comes to absolutely everything else, which is, you know, when there's a character, she lives in a world, there's all kind of stuff that'll happen around her. All that I keep very strictly realistic. I milk it a little bit for the humor maybe, you know, I uh, make it a little funnier than it would be when it played out. But I really feel, and it, in both Zoya and Bitora, I have, I think, touched upon very, um, pretty serious subjects, whether it's, uh, and even in Pricey Thakur Girls, I cover a lot of that stuff, but I cover it in the way I think that the book demands it be covered. I also very strongly feel that if you need to make a serious point, you don't need to make it seriously. And I think that readers can smell out moral signs. And I think readers can smell out when you're trying to be sensationalistic. So you have to watch out from both ends. The book is about freedom of speech. The book is about the anti-defamation bill of 1988, which the government attempt with, attempted to pass. And that finally did not pass because there was such an, um, you know, there was like so much of a reaction from uh, journalists and from, um, you, you know, thinkers and intellectuals. And the bill was, you know, I mean, they had to withdraw it. So it is about that. That's the central point. There's a lot of family in the book, which I really enjoyed writing. Uh, a lot of uh, dynamics between um, uncles and aunts and brothers and sisters and um, people's insecurities. And the fact that I, I usually find that books about sisters, everybody is unmarried and the parents are really worried. Here are three girls are married and gone. Now these two little ones are left and they're finally getting to rule the roost because the big sisters have gone. But the trouble is that the big sisters keep coming back and uh, with their kids and with their husbands and with their insecurities and stuff. So I just um, really enjoyed writing that and I, was, uh, and I was very clear that I would not get into that, oh, my daughter's unmarried kind of a thing, which I just find, you know, something that I felt would make it very um, formulaic.